All right, good evening, everyone. I, this is not the title of my presentation. I uh, did not create one, so I guess I'm not off to a wonderful start, but grateful for the opportunity. Excited to be here, and in keeping with the theme of the night, what we're gonna do, hopefully, is talk about some altered outlooks. So, until six months ago, I was a minister. I worked at a large downtown church. I had a comfy office, I had a good salary, I had great benefits, I was living the dream. Or at least I was living the dream I thought I was supposed to live uh, since I was about 17 years old. So, when I was 17, I had quite a different outlook. You see, I felt called into ministry. I thought God had spoken to me and was calling me into ministry, and this came with a very specific outlook. You see, I was going to save the church, and I was going to save the world from all of those godless, heathen liberals that were seeking to lead the little church lambs astray. Now, here's the thing about the evangelical outlook, and I can speak to this as a recovering evangelical. God reaches out in this outlook and speaks directly into your heart and tells you right from wrong. And so no matter what you think, you're always right because you're always speaking for God. Well, this worked for a while until ultimately it didn't. And you're never prepared to leave this outlook behind, or at least I wasn't prepared to leave it behind. You see, the faith with which I grew up was grounded in certainty, and I had no framework for a faith that would allow any sort of doubt. Now, I'm grateful for this because as I grew theologically, I developed a more inclusive outlook that valued the vast array of faith and human experiences that everyone has. And I was so grateful for this, but to be honest, it messed with me because when I looked back at how I was, my old outlook, I knew that wasn't God. How could I be sure that this was? So for a long time, I tried to suppress this. If I could just focus really hard on dogma, if I could think about the bodily resurrection of Christ and Christ's divinity, and if I could just preach it and preach it and preach it, eventually I would start to believe it again, my faith would be restored, and I would be okay. Now this old German dude right here is a guy by the name of Paul Tillich, and Tillich makes a fascinating argument about dogma. What he says is that it saved Christianity from becoming caught up in the Roman mystery religions. But he says that when dogma developed, we lost our sense of mystery. We gave meaning to words and concepts that are beyond definition. This is another old white dude. I apologize for that. But his name is Alfred North Whitehead. Now, Whitehead gets back to the original meaning of dogma and says that it was more philosophic suggestions. Now, that's fascinating because it means that dogma in its original intent wasn't meant to be universal law forever. It was suggestion. I find these two theologians incredibly helpful because what they have taught me is that maybe faith is not about a journey from doubt to certainty. Instead, it might be about a journey from certainty to doubt. This was a concept that, 17 -year -old, that for 17-year-old me was just impossible. Another old white guy. This one is Rembrandt. Now, Rembrandt obviously is one of the greatest artists that the world has ever known. He gave us Belshazzar's Feast, uh, Night Watch, the Sea of Galilee, all of these wonderful paintings. But it's two of his etchings I want to talk about tonight. And it's the etchings that he did of Abraham and Isaac. For those of you that do not know the story, Abraham was told by God to sacrifice his one and only son, Isaac. And Abraham, to this day, is held up as a model of faith in Christianity, in Judaism, in Islam, as the embodiment of faith. And what I want us to do is look at this first etching. Look at this. Now, Isaac, that's the son. He seems a little concerned, right? His dad's about to kill him, so we can't blame him. But look at Abraham. Look at the certainty. He's convincing Isaac, follow me. Everything will be okay. We've got this under control. Now, what I want us to see here is Rembrandt's context. He was a young artist at this time. He had a lovely wife with whom he was deeply in love. He had one or two daughters. He had one or two sons. He was making money. He was living the dream. And so his faith was very sure and secure at this time in his life. Now, 10 years later, Rembrandt creates this etching. And look at it. Look at Abraham's face. There's no relief. He could care less that that angel has shown up to take away the knife. It's the look of a defeated man who cannot believe that God asked him to do something so horrific and who also can't believe that he actually considered doing it. 
Rembrandt's context over these 10 years had changed along with his outlook. His wife became ill, and I believe she died. He lost both of his daughters. He also lost his son. The storm hit Rembrandt's life, and it changed his outlook and the way he talked about faith. And you know what? When the storm hits, our outlook changes. I hope that none of y'all have tried to sacrifice a child. We've all gotten the horrible diagnosis, been there for the friend or family member who has also gotten it. We've all had that experience that has challenged our faith. And so for me, my experience was that dogma, the dogma I had preached, the dogma I had tried to believe, did not leave room for the sort of doubt that I found increasing in my own life and that I think the majority of humans experience as well. So there I was, I was living the dream. I had a pulpit at a real church now and a beard. And I preached and I preached and I tried to convince myself that the doubt was okay, that I could uphold it, that I could do it, but my outlook had shifted and I just felt like I was living a lie. So I left. And I wanna be clear, I do think that one can experience God, if you will, can experience spirituality within the context of organized religion in the church. I think that is a path for some people and I wanna affirm that. It wound up not being my path and the more people I encounter and the more people I meet can relate to this. And so for me, when my outlook changed, I realized that God, if there is a God, and to be honest, I don't know, but if there is one, that God is not found in the dogma of religion, that God by and large is found outside of it in the midst of real human experience, in the midst of real doubt, and certainly not with a perspective brought by certainty. Thank you. Yeah.